Rational exponents. An expression written in radical notation has a radical with an index, the radicand, and that entire term is grouped and raised to an exponent. If we were to convert that into a rational exponent notation, you would take the radicand and raise it to an exponent that's written as a fraction. So the index would become the denominator of that fraction, and the exponent that's raised on the outside becomes the numerator of that fraction. So we need to be comfortable converting expressions between the two different notations. So first, let's just practice that. If we have this, remember we're going to take the radicand and we're going to raise that to an exponent that's a fraction. The denominator of the fraction is going to be the index and the numerator is going to be the power that the term is raised to. Now this is raised to an invisible power of 1, so we're just going to put 1 here in the numerator. So if we convert this one, we'll follow the same method. We take the radicand, and then we're going to raise it to an exponent that's a fraction. The index goes in the denominator. And this time we do have an exponent that the entire term is raised to. That goes in the numerator. Now in example 3 and 4, we're going to go the other route. We're going to convert the exponential notation into radical notation. So you take the base, which is going to go underneath the radicand, and then remember the denominator of the exponent is the index, and the numerator is the power that the term is raised to. Now we normally don't write an index of 2, and we also don't put an exponent of 1. So your final answer converted to radical notation would just be the square root of 9. Now this is the conversion, and then of course, you simplify further if the directions tell you to. In example four, we'll follow that same process. So 10 is the base that goes underneath the radicand. And then the denominator is the index. The numerator is the power that the term is raised to. So here we just focus on converting from exponential notation to radical notation and from radical notation to exponential notation. So next we'll work through some examples where we're actually going to simplify the expressions. So here we want to simplify each number. So first we're going to take the expression from the exponential notation and convert it into the radical notation so that we can simplify this. So remember, this is what we had written out and worked out on the page before for our conversions. So we're going to take a base of 4 and put that underneath the radical. The index is going to be 2, and this is all raised to the third power. So once we have it written out like this, what we want to do is take the square root of 4, which is going to be 2, and then we want to take 2 cubed with a simplified answer of 8. So let's go ahead and work out example 2 we need to first convert it into radical notation. So take the base, and that goes underneath the radical. The denominator is going to be our index, and then we're going to raise that term to the power of the numerator. So the cube root of 8, we've done this several times, and it should be 2. So you can either work it out by simplifying, breaking down the 8 in your factor tree, or using your calculator. And then we want to raise 2 to the power of 2, so 2 squared is going to give us an answer of 4. When we take a look at example 3 and example 4, they're very similar to each other, and they're actually very similar to example 2, but it differs slightly. Example 3 and example 4 both have negatives, but there's a difference in where the parentheses lie. This is saying that negative 8 is raised to the power of two-thirds. In example four, we have eight raised to a power of two-thirds, and that number is multiplied by a negative. So you need to pay close attention to whether the parentheses are there or whether they're not there around the negative. So for example three, because the parentheses are around the negative eight, that means underneath the radical, 
is where the negative 8 goes. That negative 8 will go with it. <clears throat> then we want to take the denominator, that's our index, and then our numerator is the power that you raise the term to. So we're going to work this the same way. The cube root of negative 8, and again, because this is an odd index, we can take odd roots of negative numbers. So we have negative 2 raised to the second power. So negative 2 squared is negative 2 times negative 2, which gives us a positive 4. When we work out example 4, when we convert this into radical notation, it's actually only the 8 that goes under the radical. The negative stays outside. And then the denominator is the index. And just this term gets raised to the second power. So that negative still stays outside. So we want to work with the inside. The cube root of 8 is 2. And 2 squared is 4. Now lastly, we bring in that negative. Negative times a positive 4 gives us a negative 4. So make sure you're paying close attention to that base, whether it has a negative with it inside the parentheses or whether the negative is outside of the parentheses because you'll end up with a very different answer. Here we also want to work on simplifying all four of these numbers that were given. But remember what happens when you have a negative exponent. If the number is on the top of the fraction, it moves to the bottom so that the exponent becomes positive. If the number is on the bottom of the fraction, it moves to the top to make a negative exponent positive. So here, our very first step is we're going to take 4 to the negative 1, and because this is on the top of our fraction, we're going to move it to the bottom first. So we have 1 over 4 to the positive 1. Then, after turning that exponent positive, we just want to simplify this number. 4 to the first power is just 4, so our final simplified answer is 1 fourth. In example 2, we'll follow those same steps. First, we want to make this exponent positive, so we're going to bring it underneath the fraction, 9 to the positive 1 half. Now, let's go ahead and convert this into radical notation. So this becomes 1 over... Remember, 9 goes underneath the radical, and then 2 is the index, and it's all raised to the power of 1. So when we simplify this, we have 1 over 9. When you take the square root of 9, it's 3. 3 raised to the 1 power is just 3. So our simplified answer is 1 third. Taking a look at example 3 and example 4, we're going to follow the same way. So let's do example 3 together. First, we need to make the exponent positive. So we put 1 over 16 to the positive 3 halves. And then this is going to equal 1 over, and we want to convert this into radical notation. 16 goes under the radical. 2 is going to be the index. And then it's raised to the third power. So we have... The square root of 16 is going to be 4, and when we cube 4, we end up with 1 over 64 as our final simplified answer. Now I want you to try this last one on your own and check back with me when you're finished. So first you should have put 1 over 81 to the positive 3 fourths power, and then convert it into radical notation. So we have a radical of 81, index of 4, all raised to the power of 3. Then to simplify this further, we have 1 over the fourth root of 81 is going to be 3 raised to the third power. So 3 cubed gives us 1 over 27 as our final simplified answer. That's it for this lesson. I'll see you in class for more practice.